If you have problems you can't solve, send them to solve at midnighttutor.com. Also, urgent announcement. In the next few weeks, we will be coming out with a com comprehensive summary of tutorials to prepare for the AP calculus test. All the tough problems. And if you have tough problems that you have not been able to solve in your own AP review, you know where to send them. Okay, the problem today is kind of a tough one, but not impossible. Let me just read the statement first. The circle x squared plus y squared equals a squared is revolved around the line y equals minus a, which is tangent to the circle at zero minus a. It says find the area of the surface generated. So now the first time I read this problem, I thought, oh, this is a slam dunk because we're looking for volume. Well, sorry, I read too fast. Don't make that same mistake yourself. It's the surface area we want to calculate, which is a whole different ball game. So let's do a drawing here to illustrate what we're talking about. So this is a circle, right? Since our circle is centered at the, at the origin, it has a radius of A. And the tangent line is Y equals minus A, which is here. So we're going to revolve this circle around this line, which gives us a parallel cross-sectional image here. And essentially, it gives us what looks like a donut with no hole in the center. So what we are being asked to find is the area, the surface area of this donut, which has a, a minor radius of A, cross-sectional radius of A, and also a radius of the center of the donut of A, but that has no hole in the center. So now let's see what we can do to figure this thing out. It's not obvious how to get started. And further, when we deal with these equations for circles, we always have that plus or minus issue, which can be somewhat of a pain. Okay, let's see what happens. Now, the, the first thing I would do is look at this from the standpoint of solving this equation for y and saying that this height y above the x-axis is the square root of a squared minus x squared, right? So we can say here y is going to be plus the square root of a squared minus x squared. And that down here, the y value would be the minus 1, minus the square root of a squared minus x squared. The problem is that doesn't really help us, because what we want is we have our dx term, the, the infinitesimal strip that we're going to use to eventually create this donut has to be tangent to the curve, right? So our ds values are tangent to the curve, whereas this just gives us a y and an x which is perpendicular to the curve. And if you sum up, now you could say, well, in the, in the limit, as the thing gets smaller, doesn't the tangent piece and the vertical piece become the same? Well, not exactly. So there's no easy way to get an expression for this little piece here, which we'll call, let's let me draw it on this side so it's easier to see in a different color. We'll call this little piece here ds. And it has a, a infinitesimal width. And so, so when we revolve this ds as part of the donut, what it becomes essentially is a ribbon. And if I unfold it, it's a long strip, right? If I take a ribbon and I cut it, it becomes a strip. What's the width of it? Well, the width of the, of the strip is ds. And what's the length? Well, it's going to be the perimeter of this circle, which is 2 pi times the radius of this particular circle, of this strip. So now, what are we going to do? Because we don't have an easy way to write ds in terms of x's and y's. But we certainly can find the radius as we, as we go from this point here all the way around. We can find the radius of each of these little ribbons. Well, this is a case where polar coordinates makes life so much easier. Now, I don't know whoever sent this problem in to us. I don't know whether polar coordinates is something you've been taught yet, but I'm going to solve this using polar coordinates because I don't know how to do, do it otherwise. And we can come up with the correct answer using polar coordinates. A tiny refresher.
on polar coordinates. If we have a circle, of radius A, we take some angle here, theta, from the x-axis, and we say that this, the height of this triangle here, which is, would be sort of the y value, is going to be A sine theta, and the x value, which is sort of the length, is going to be a cosine theta. And this is another way to represent a circle. We also remember that the formula for the area, the, the uh, arc length, s equals r theta, right? So in this case, we're just going to have a little piece. So we're going to make this a d theta, r d theta. Hopefully you're starting to see how we're going about solving this problem. And now it's going to become just a little tedious. Let me erase some of this stuff just to make more room. So we can say that ds, our ds strip, is going to be r d theta. And in this case, the, the r value we're talking about is the radius of the cross section of the donut. So this is the same as a d theta. And then the radius here, r, we're going to have to figure out. So let me, to avoid confusion, let me just write this. like this. We have too many R's here. So we're going to let R represent the radius of each ribbon. So now we have to divide it into two pieces. We have to take everything outside of the center line. Let me, I'm going to shade it in red. We have to take this first as one integral and then everything that's on the inside as a separate integral. And then that way we can let the theta go from this side to that side, and it should all work out. Okay, so let's look at the part that's shaded in red. So the ribbon height, so we have all the minimum radius we're going to have is going to be here and here, where we already have a distance of A. And then we're adding on to that this little piece here, which we decided is the Y component, A sine theta. So we can say that this is going to be, the r out here is going to be a plus a sine theta. Right, that's our little, here's our value theta in the curve. And on the inside part, we don't have this a contribution. It, it goes the other way. So we start here and we have a then it goes down to eventually to zero and then back to A. So in here, we're going to say the R is going to be A minus A sine theta. Right, this is just a matter of adding and subtracting distances to figure out what is the value here, here, and here, and then what formula makes it work. So we have a distance A which then decreases. So we have A minus A sine theta. Here we have a distance A which then increases. So we have A plus A sine theta. So now let's write our integral in two pieces. So we're going to say that the surface area S is going to be, first of all, the integral from theta being all the way over here, which we know would be minus pi over 2, right, minus 90 degrees, to all the way over here. It's going to vary all through this 180 degree arc over here to pi over 2, or is that 0? Well, if we call this minus pi over 2, we better call this other side pi over 2. And we're going to have each strip. So we have two, time, 2 pi times the radius, 
which in this case is going to be a plus a sine theta times ds, which is a d theta. Right, so this is going to give us the surface area of the outside half of the donut. Now we have to do the surface area of the inside half, so we have to add to that the integral from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2, right? We're just going to start here and rotate this way. It doesn't, the math doesn't care because the area, the, the radius is forcing us to go down in one path and up on the other. The same thing, 2 pi times a minus a sine theta times a d theta. So now we have, we're 90% we're of the way there. We have a mathematical expression using calculus for the surface area. Now all we have to do is solve the integrals. Well, fortunately, notice we have the plus a sine theta term here and the minus a sine theta term here. But when we expand these things, those two pieces cancel. So we don't even have to integrate the trigonometric function. Let me erase this so I have some room to write. So what I get then is I get 2 pi times integral from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2 of 2 pi a squared d theta this term cancels with this term and we're letting plus the integral minus pi over 2 to pi over 2 of 2 pi a squared d theta. So that then is a, so 2 pi of something plus 2 pi of something is 4 pi of something. We add the 2 plus 2 is 4. So this is 4 pi times the integral minus pi over 2 to pi over 2 of, we can actually pull the a squared out also times d theta. The integral of d theta is just theta. So this is 4 pi a squared theta evaluated from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2 so that's just going to be pi over 2 minus minus pi over 2 which then equals So pi over 2 minus, minus pi over 2 is the same as pi over 2 plus pi over 2. So 2 pi over 2 then is just pi, which gives us then 4 pi squared a squared, which is the correct answer. So this is using polar coordinates. The tough part here is deciding what your ribbon is going to look like. The thing that the infinitesimal thing, the thing you give the little d to, what it's going to look like, because we just can't take our pieces to be perpendicular or parallel to one of the two axes. We have to take our little piece in the plane of the circle, which forces us to use polar coordinates. And then we have to know how to represent a circle using polar coordinates. What is arc length using polar coordinates? S equals r theta, or ds equals r d theta. And then when we cut the strip, it becomes a rectangle. At that point, the problem is pretty simple. The other thing that is sometimes tedious and tricky in these problems is deciding what the radius value is going to be. We had to know that, okay, here we have, obviously, for the top part, the part in red, we have a minimum error radius of A, and then we're adding this additional Y component to it, whereas for the other part, the part that's not shaded, we have a, a maximum radius of A, and then we're taking away the Y component as we go around the circle. Okay, please call, please send us an email if you have any questions or if you have additional problems, and good luck.